From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13, brought to you by SSP TV and the Standard Speaker. Investigators now say they know who the killer is in a horrifying murder on Diamond Avenue last year, but can they arrest him? The suspect in the Maria Bria murder, our top story on News 13 for this Tuesday. Good evening, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us. I'm Kathy Bazinski. Investigators now say they know who killed 32-year-old Maria Bria and that they've suspected the killer all along. Christina Papa just back from a news conference at Hazleton City Hall this afternoon with the very latest. They're in search of justice for Maria Bria. Maria Bria's body was found concealed in a Diamond Avenue apartment building where she lived back on Wednesday, December 19th. Her family hadn't seen her since the Friday before and reported her missing after she failed to pick up her children from school that day. Police discovered the body when they executed a search warrant on the apartment. Missing since the same time was the man Bria shared the apartment with, her former boyfriend, Oscar Lozano Garcia. Investigators say they believe Garcia was responsible from the beginning, but couldn't find him and wanted to give him an opportunity to surface. Now police say Bria was strangled to death and Garcia is considered a suspect. Um, we just wanted to make it uh, known that we do believe that Mr. Garcia is the individual that has been involved and is involved in the death of Maria uh, Bria. Today, Hazleton City Police say they are now actively looking for Bria's 45-year-old ex-boyfriend and have charged him with an open count of criminal homicide. We are filing the complaint. We are still actively seeking for uh, seeking um, to find, actively looking for Mr. Garcia at this point in time. Police say they are not sure of his whereabouts, but don't believe he's in the area. We are confident he's not in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, but we are still actively trying to locate him so we can apprehend him. Anyone with information about Oscar Lozano Garcia's whereabouts is asked to call police. Christina Papa, News 13, Hazleton. Well, I'm sure you've noticed, but it's really cold outside and it's going to stay this way right through the weekend. Last night's slippery storm wasn't the exclamation point which helped usher in the cold snap. Though the snow had pretty much moved out of the area by late Monday evening, we woke up Tuesday morning to bitterly cold single-digit temperatures. And brace yourself, while the thermometer struggled toward 20 during the daylight hours today, it will drop like a rock back into the single digits tonight. Add the wind factor, and you're looking at wind chills in the neighborhood of the minus T. So bundle up, let the faucets in your home run, and keep pets and cars out of the cold. Time now for our regional weather from the National Weather Service. Checking the radar, nothing but clear skies in our area and clear mix for nothing but good and cold, and that's the, what we're in for till further notice. Now, tonight's creative condition is designed to take us away from the cold. It's by Anaya McFadden, who's a student at Hazleton Elementary Medical School, and she drew a summer day at the lake with the mountains in the distance and a few clouds rolling by. Now let's take a look at News 13 weather from the National Weather Service for Greater Hazleton tonight. Cloudy, slight chance of snow showers, and there's a snuggle alert in effect with a low down to two degrees. The wind chill takes it down to minus 14. Then for Wednesday, mostly cloudy with the high near 13. Wind chill again down to minus 14. Overnight low down to a mere seven degrees. Heading to Schuylkill County tonight, scattered flurries, mostly cloudy with a low around five. Wind chill of minus six. Then for Wednesday, mostly cloudy with a high near 15 and a chill of minus six. Nighttime low of eight degrees. Well, while we can bundle up in our cold weather gear, our pets can't, so it's very important to keep an eye on them with these frigid temperatures. Actually, experts say that with temperatures getting down to single digits and the wind factor taking the temperature down even lower, dogs and cats should be primarily kept indoors and allowed out only if necessary. If you do keep your dog outside during this harsh cold weather, there is some advice to show you care. I recommend they put hay if they have an outside dog because blankets do freeze. And at a certain temperature, you want to bring your dog in the foyer or a basement because it's, they get very cold and it's inhumane to keep them out in such cold weather. And if your dog does spend time out of doors, refill their water bowl frequently so they have water when they need it and not a big ice cube. 
Now, if getting the snow or ice off the driveway wasn't trouble enough, the single-digit temperatures this morning made starting the car a challenge for a lot of folks. If you haven't taken the time to winterize your vehicle as we take this mid-January plunge, you might want to get on that so you don't face any cold, frustrating mornings. Ben Nutt says there are some things you should do to make sure your car, truck, or SUV is winter ready. Make sure that all of your fluid levels are full. Make sure your wipers don't streak. You might even want to get special winter blades. Check that your heater and defroster are working properly. Make sure all your lights are working. Check tires for proper inflation and tread depth or invest in some snow tires and put together an emergency travel kit including jumper cables, a cell phone and a charger, some blankets and some food and some water. Well, it is January, and that means those W-2 forms and other statements on taxable income will start trickling into our mailboxes any day now. For years, folks at the Hazleton Senior Center have been getting help filing their taxes from an outside agency, but now due to some scheduling problems, that won't be happening. Sheila Moyer was happy with the AARP's free tax program last year. I had my taxes done here last year, and uh, everybody was very nice, and it was done very well and I intended to do it again this year. But this year, the Greater Hazleton Senior Citizen Center won't be offering the tax program, and Sheila doesn't understand why. But then we found out that we will not be able to, and I was very disappointed. For 20 years, the AARP, or American Association of Retired Persons, worked directly with the Senior Center to make sure the seniors there had help with their taxes. But last year, the Area Agency on Aging made administrative changes and took direct control over the center, which set up the AARP service on its own. Now the agency has decided to no longer honor the agreement, so no free tax services. Sheila depended on them. Now she'll have to look elsewhere for help. They were. Yes, it was free, which is really the best part of it all. <laughs> and she isn't the only one looking to find help with her tax prep. The service helps around 150 seniors annually. But I, I think it's terrible. A lot of people don't have the mean, ways and means to get somewhere else to get the taxes done. Plus, it, it, who knows if it's going to be free. Rosemary DeBuys says seniors have worked all their lives to help the area, so now they deserve the services from the government. It's kind of silly, to be perfectly honest. Why are they pick on the seniors for everything? I mean, take this away from the seniors, take that away from the seniors. Who built this country? I mean, this town especially. She says not everybody can pay to get the help, so programs like the one that was set up at the senior center are really a great thing. Every, they're living on fixed incomes, and it's scary. It, it really is scary. Still, Sheila says she'll be able to get help locally at another center, but hopes the program will be back in Hazleton next year. Well, so because it's so handy here and we're used to coming here. So, you know, maybe next year they'll be coming back. We're hoping that anyway. Now, the Agency on Aging does say that center members can arrange to have their taxes done through a CEO program. The state says Pennsylvania residents who file personal income tax returns can now begin filing their state taxes electronically. Actually, it would prefer if residents file electronically. Nearly 76 percent, or about 4.7 million, of the 6.2 million personal income tax returns received by the state of Pennsylvania last year were filed electronically. The Department of Revenue says that in addition to being more convenient for taxpayers, e-filing generates processing cost savings for the department. Electronic filing also offers advantages to tax taxpayers not available to those filing by paper, such as error-reducing automatic calculators, instant confirmation of successful filing, faster refunds, and direct deposit options. You can find information about free electronic e-filing at www.revenue.state.pa.us. A Hazleton Arts Group is asking Luzerne County for forgiveness on its back taxes. The Pennsylvania Theater of Performing Arts is asking the county to forgive $27,000 in back taxes it incurred before it received its tax exempt status. The nonprofit owes the back taxes from 2010 through 2012 on the JJ Ferrara Center. The Theater of Performing Arts bought the facility from the Greater Hazleton Philharmonic back in 2010. Theater administrators say they didn't know that nonprofit status had to be requested and granted in advance. That's why they're asking for the forgiveness retroactively. Prior to Luzerne County Home Rule, county forgiveness was granted if the city and school district had awarded it, which they have. County Council is scheduled to vote on the request at its meeting tonight. And still ahead on News 13, the games go on despite the cold weather. Fred Barletta coming up with News 13 Sports. And everybody's thinking budget at this time of year, including the Hazleton School District, where taxpayer dollars are headed when News 13 continues.
Hey guys, and welcome to this week's Super Segment. I'm here with Dr. Antonelli, and what he says are the two smartest guys in all of the district. I'm over, uh, Dr. Antonelli, we're going to be talking a little bit about business and definitely about budget breakdown. Can you explain a little bit about what's going on with this year's budget? We've begun the process of developing our annual budget, our budget for the 2013-14 school year. And Christina, it's an increasingly challenging process uh, for us. Uh, currently, we are reviewing the individual building budgets with the uh, building level administrators to see how those budgets will fit into the overall puzzle. Very nice. And so, Tony, what, what's the process and, and what kind of approvals do, do you have to make for the budget this year? Okay, we, uh, as you know, we need to have our budget approved finally in the end of June. We did start in uh, uh, October with our buildings and departments. They uh, did give their budgets back to us. We're currently meeting with the board and talking to the board about the two options. One, um, the first option is to, which we've done in the past, approve a preliminary budget in February. Mm -hmm. But we are looking at a second option this year to um, approve, approve a resolution that the board would agree not to go beyond the Act 1 index, which for next year is 2.4%. So if they would approve their resolution, we do not need to do a budget in February. Um, we would keep working on the budget, and the pr a proposed budget will be approved in May. And so the new, the new uh, approved budget, what would this mean for the area and for, and for the high school? Um, basically, it, it, the budget is for our general fund that basically um, delineates every expenditure and revenue for the district. So it means more money, hopefully, and just being able to put it where it needs to be placed. Is that right? That's correct. Okay. All right. Thanks so much, Tony. And then over here, Bob, can you explain a little bit about where the money is going to be going and, and, and where will you be setting um, those, those monies in place? Sure. Uh, the biggest part of the budget is obviously the salary and benefits for all the employees. So Mr. Reba and I actually take the time to individually account for every person that does work for the school district and have their salaries and benefits uh, budgeted for accordingly. This year we faced two big tasks with a new school coming along, the Hazleton Area Academy of Sciences, which will be some new positions along with obviously new uh, equipment and supplies needed for that building. And we also challenge a, uh, have, a, have a big challenge coming up with the Piecers, which is going to be a big increase for our budget this year. So we have uh, quite a task ahead of us. So that's really where the, the newest change is going to be is for that new school. Can you explain maybe a couple things that you're going to be putting the money into for the school? Oh, sure. Um, not just to, the building itself and, and to, to, to staff it, but you're going to have all, you know, all new furniture. You're going to have programs there that uh, they're actually piloting right now over at our Hazleton Area High School. Um, some some top line equipment and uh, again it's just it's going to be a lot of unknowns at this point because it is a STEM school and we are doing all the research needed in order to make sure we have the actual equipment and supplies and I, I believe we're not even going with textbooks we're going to be going with some kind of handheld tablet which will house many books on it and uh, it's actually going to be a, a nice endeavor. Very nice. So they'll definitely have the equipment and the textbooks I guess, electronic textbooks that they'll need for the school year. All right. Thanks, guys, so much for meeting with me today. And that's this week's Super Segment. We're talking about business, budgets, and we'll see you next week. And let's check the winning midday lottery numbers. Good luck to play the daily number 096, the big four, 8085, Quinto, four. Four four one seven and treasure hunt five nine twelve twenty one twenty five. Hope you won. Good evening, everyone, and here's tonight's social news. First tonight, happy birthday to Henry Steving Jr. This wish comes with love from your family and friends. Tonight's talk of the town report: McAdoo Catholic will be holding the annual toy bingo Sunday, January twenty seventh at one p.m. All are welcome to attend. The cost of tickets is $5 and entitles the player to 13 games. There will be two specials for $1 each featuring a Samsung Galaxy Appeal Go Phone and an Xbox 360. All specials will be sold at the door at tonight's Talk of the Town. News 13 would like to send sincere condolences to the family and friends of these recently departed. Jean Esposito Tamamini, formerly of Hazleton, Mass will be Friday at 10.30 a.m. in the St. Teresa's Roman Catholic Church. Friends may call Thursday from 6 to 8 p.m. at the Parthamore Funeral Home. Fred T. Schleppi of Berwick, 
Services will be held privately and at the convenience of the family. The Harmon Funeral Home is assisting the family with the arrangements. Thomas Leo Fetterman Jr. of Hazleton. Memorial will be held in the spring at a time to be announced by the Harmon Funeral Home. Dennis B. Gallagher, formerly of Hazleton. Mass is Thursday at 9.30 a.m. in the St. Gabriel's Church. Arrangements are under the direction of the Boyle Funeral Home. And Ruth Bevins Johnson of Weatherly. Private arrangements are being handled by the Philip J. Jeffries Funeral Home. Tonight's obituaries have been brought to you by the Smile Act Floral Shop, located on 15th Street in Hazleton. Free delivery to all local funeral homes, call 570-454-0111. And by Mia's, once again, Hazleton area's number one rated restaurant. Call 570-501-3410 for information on luncheon packages. Well, what better way to spend a day off of school than with a friend at their school? MMI Prep invited their students to bring a friend to school to see what school at MMI is all about. Janine Mazurkevich tells us school is always better with a friend. Kids eating, laughing, and sharing their classwork. That's what Kristen says she did today when she came as a guest to MMI Prep School in Freeland with her best bud, Jessica but she also did some things she'd never done before. I went into Greek class and I learned a lot of new words in there. And we did a different game in gym. We had to get everyone's flag and that was pretty fun. Thomas Hood is the head of school at MMI Prep. He says all students in grades six to eight were welcome to bring a school age guest with them to see what MMI has to offer. It's an opportunity for our middle school students to bring one of their friends and show off their school, meaning uh, the school that our students go to. And it's also a chance to expose potential other students who might be coming here in the future to our school. This is Jessica McClellan's first year at MMI, and there's plenty to show off to friends who don't go to the school. It's different because you change classes every, like, different time, mm -hmm. and there's lockers and other more people. Mr. Hood says the event is a positive experience for both the students and faculty and he cannot wait to do it again next year. Well it helps out obviously with admissions because it brings students to our school who wouldn't otherwise come here but it also allows our students to take some pride in the school because they get to show off what they're doing, their teachers, to their friends and everybody likes to do that. And while Kristen may have loved the visit she still says there's no place like home. Well I do like it here, but I'd, I'd be scared to leave my old friends because I've known them a lot. Yeah. And I do like my other school, too, yeah. but I really like it here. Janine Mazurkevich, News 13, Freeland. And plenty more news and information headed your way on News 13. Earlier this afternoon, investigators announced the suspect in a brutal killing in Hazleton. But can they make an arrest? That story and much more news when the 13 crew comes right back. Investigators say they know who killed a young mother and hid her body in her Diamond Avenue apartment. But can they actually make an arrest? The latest in the murder of Maria Bria, our top story on News 13 at 4.30. From the Samsung Production Studios in the heart of Hazleton, Pennsylvania, it's your News 13. Good evening and thanks so much for staying with us tonight. I'm Kathy Bazinski. Investigators now say they know who killed 32-year-old Maria Bria and that they've suspected the killer all along. Christina Papa just back from a news conference at Hazleton City Hall this afternoon with the latest. They're in search of justice for Maria Bria. Maria Bria's body was found concealed in a Diamond Avenue apartment building where she lived back on Wednesday, December 19th. Her family hadn't seen her since the Friday before and reported her missing after she failed to pick up her children from school that day. Police discovered the body when they executed a search warrant on the apartment. Missing since the same time was the man Bria shared the apartment with, her former boyfriend, Oscar Lozano Garcia. Investigators say they believe Garcia was responsible from the beginning, but couldn't find him and wanted to give him an opportunity to surface. Now police say Bria was strangled to death and Garcia is considered a suspect. Um, we just wanted to make it uh, known that we do believe that Mr. Garcia is the individual that has been involved and is involved in the death of Maria uh, Bria. Today, Hazleton City Police say they are now actively looking for Bria's 45-year-old ex-boyfriend and have charged him with an open count of criminal homicide. I, we are filing the complaint. We are still actively seeking, for, uh, seeking um, to find, actively looking for Mr. Garcia at this point in time. 
Police say they are not sure of his whereabouts, but don't believe he's in the area. We are confident he's not in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania, but we are still actively trying to locate him so we can apprehend him. Anyone with information about Oscar Lozano Garcia's whereabouts is asked to call police. Christina Papa, News 13, Hazleton. I'm sure you've noticed, but it's really cold outside and it's going to stay that way right through this weekend. Last night's slippery storm was the exclamation point which helped usher in the cold snap. Though the snow had pretty much moved out of the area by late Monday evening, we woke up this morning to bitterly cold single-digit temperatures. And brace yourself, while the thermometer struggled toward 20 during the daylight hours today, it will drop like a rock back into the single digits tonight. Add the wind chill factor and you're looking at chills in the neighborhood of the minus teens. So bundled up, let the faucets in your home run and keep pets and cars out of the cold. Let's take a look at the weather from the National Weather Service. Check on the radar. Nothing but clear skies pretty much in our area. And that's what makes for good and cold. And that's what we're in for until further notice. Tonight's creative condition designed to take us away from the cold for a moment or two. It's by Anaya McFadden. She's a student at Hazleton Elementary Middle School. And she drew us a summer day at the lake with the mountains in the distance and a few clouds rolling on by. Now let's take a look at News 13 weather from the National Weather Service for Greater Hazleton. Tonight it'll be cloudy with a slight chance of snow showers and a snuggle alert in effect with a low of about 2 degrees. Wind chill down to minus 14. Tomorrow, mostly cloudy with a high near 13, wind chill down to minus 14 and an overnight low down to 7 degrees. And for Thursday, mostly sunny with a high near 20, slight chance of snow at night and a low down to 8 degrees. And Friday, here we go again, snow likely with a high near 17, chance of precip 70%. Friday night, snow showers with a low around 7, then Saturday, partly sunny with a high up all the way up to 18. On over to Schuylkill County. Tonight's scattered flurries, mostly cloudy with a low around 5. Wind chill of minus 6. That's right. Wednesday, mostly cloudy with a high near 15. The wind chill again, minus 6. Nighttime low of about 8 degrees. Then Thursday, partly sunny with a high all the way up to 17. Slight chance of snow at night, low down to 9. Then Friday, snow likely with a high near 21. Chance of precip again, 70%. Snow continuing into the evening with a low around 12. And then Saturday, partly sunny at last with a high near 20 degrees. Well, while we can bundle up in this cold weather, our pets can't, so it's very important to keep an eye on them in these frigid temperatures. Actually, experts say that with temperatures getting down to seagull digits and the wind factor taking the temperature down even lower, dogs and cats should be primarily kept inside and allowed out only when necessary. If you do keep your dog outside during the harsh cold weather, there is some advice to show that you care, though. I recommend they put hay if they have an outside dog because blankets do freeze. And at a certain temperature, you want to bring your dog in the foyer or a basement because it's, they get very cold and it's inhumane to keep them out in such cold weather. And if your dog does spend some time outdoors, refill their water bowl frequently so they have water when they need it and not a big ice cube. If getting the snow or ice off the driveway wasn't trouble enough, the single-digit temperatures this morning made starting the car a challenge for a lot of folks. If you haven't taken the time to winterize your vehicle as we take this mid-January plunge, you might want to get on that so you don't face any cold, frustrating mornings. PennDOT says there are some things you should do to make sure your car, truck, or SUV is winter ready. Make sure that all of your fluid levels are full. Make sure your wipers don't streak. You might even want to get special winter blades. Check that your heater and your defroster are working properly. That is essential. Make sure all your lights are working. Check your tires for proper inflation and tread depth or invest in some snow tires and put together an emergency travel kit including jumper cables, cell phone and that all-important cell phone charger, some blankets and some food and some water. Well, it's January, and that means those W-2 forms and other statements on taxable income will start trickling into our mailboxes any day now. For years now, folks at the Hazleton Senior Center have been getting help filing their taxes from an outside agency, but now, due to some changes, that won't be happening. Sheila Moyer was happy with the AARP's free tax program last year. I had my taxes done here last year, and uh, everybody was very nice, and it was done very well and I intended to do it again this year. But this year, the Greater Hazleton Senior Citizen Center won't be offering the tax program, and Sheila doesn't understand why. But then we found out that we will not be able to, and I was very disappointed. 
For 20 years, the AARP, or American Association of Retired Persons, worked directly with the senior center to make sure the seniors there had help with their taxes. But last year, the Area Agency on Aging made administrative changes and took direct control over the center, which set up the AARP service on its own. Now the agency has decided to no longer honor the agreement, so no free tax services. Sheila depended on them. Now she'll have to look elsewhere for help. They were. Yes, it was free, which is really the best part of it all. <laughs> and she isn't the only one looking to find help with her tax prep. The service helps around 150 seniors annually. But I, I think it's terrible. A lot of people don't have the mean, ways and means to get somewhere else to get the taxes done. Plus, it, it, who knows if it's going to be free. Rosemary DeBuys says seniors have worked all their lives to help the area, so now they deserve the services from the government. It's kind of silly, to be perfectly honest. Why are they pick on the seniors for everything? I mean, take this away from the seniors, take that away from the seniors. Who built this country? I mean, this town especially. She says not everybody can pay to get the help, so programs like the one that was set up at the senior center are really a great thing. Every, they're living on fixed incomes, and it's scary. It, it really is scary. Still, Sheila says she'll be able to get help locally at another center, but hopes the program will be back in Hazleton next year. Well, so because it's so handy here and we're used to coming here. So, you know, maybe next year they'll be coming back. We're hoping that anyway. And the Agency on Aging does say that center members can arrange to have their taxes done through a CEO program. Well, the state of Pennsylvania residents who file personal income tax returns can now begin filing your state taxes electronically. Actually, the state would prefer if you did it that way. Nearly 76 percent or about 4.7 million of the 6.2 million personal income tax returns received by the state of Pennsylvania last year were filed electronically. Department of Revenue says that in addition to being more convenient for taxpayers, E-filing generates processing cost savings for the department. Electronic filing also offers advantages to taxpayers not available to those who file by paper, things like error-reducing automatic calculators, instant confirmation of successful filing, faster refund processing, and direct deposit options. You can find info about free e-filing at www.revenue.state.pa.us. A Hazleton Arts Group is asking Luzerne County for forgiveness on its back taxes. The Pennsylvania Theater of Performing Arts is asking the county to forgive $27,000 in back taxes it incurred before it received its tax exempt status. The nonprofit owes the back taxes from 2010 through 2012 on the JJ Ferrara Center. Theater of Performing Arts bought the facility from the Hazleton Philharmonic Society in 2010. Theater administrators said they didn't know that nonprofit status had to be requested and granted in advance and that's why they're asking for the forgiveness retroactively. Now, prior to Luzerne County Home Rule, county forgiveness was granted if the city and school district had awarded it, which so far they have. County Council is scheduled to vote on the request at its meeting tonight. And coming up on News 13, as we work our way through the cold week, perhaps some indoor activities might warm things up a bit. Fred Barletta with all the action on News 13 Sports. And talking dollars and cents when it comes to Hazleton Area's new magnet school for math and science. That story straight ahead when News 13 continues. SSP TV Sports on News 13 with Fred Barletta Jr. Well, in baseball, they call it the dog days of summer, but in the winter sports season, it's this uh, late January slump that you sometimes get into. And the Hazel Terry Cougar wrestlers, well, uh, they're there. Problem is, you're doing a lot of wrestling. You're competing all the time. They had a big tournament over the weekend, and they came out a little bit flat last night at home against Berwick. Let's go down to the McGeehan Gymnasium and take a look. You're looking at action right here. They uh, started at the 220-pound division. And you're looking at uh, Duel Tejada, Hazel Tenary against Tyler Ole of Berwick. And uh, this one, well, uh, there were times here where it looked like it could go either way. But it would be Tyler Ole to get the win for Berwick. And that would uh, begin a run of four straight bouts that the uh, Bulldogs would win. You're looking at the next one here at 285 pounds. And it's Sean Cartwright going for the uh, Hazleton Area Club. That's Ryan Dooley for Berwick. And Cartwright, who uh, gave it a game effort, but uh, Dooley was too much for him. And Dooley would come away with the win on that 285, is what they call it now. Old-timers like myself 
what they used to call the heavyweights in high school wrestling. And of course, they flipped the coin to determine where it's going to be, so you don't start at the lightweights. That came in third last night, and you're looking at it right here. 106-pound bout between uh, Dakota Connor, he's from Berwick, and that's Keenan D'Alessandro for Keith Maurer's gang. And uh, now we go from the big guys to the little guys, but the result wasn't going to be any different. It was going to be Connor of Berwick we get the most of D'Alessandro, and that's a pretty tough way to start about. You go down one, two, three like that, there would be another one, but uh, hey, there were some bright spots for the Cougars. Uh, uh, Taylor Schimmerhorn at 195, he came away with a win, so did uh, Adam Friedman at 160. Larry Romanchik, he's been one of their better wrestlers at 126, had a win, and so did uh, Jeremy Votrava for uh, the Cougars at 113. But not enough, there you see. Put it up on the board. Berwick going away, 45-21. High school wrestling last night, right here in Hazleton. Now, while Berwick and Hazleton area were grappling on the mats, girls basketball were shaking it up down in Berwick. Now you look at this and say, hey, Lady Cougars win convincingly. Folks, you know what it took? How about an 18 to four fourth quarter? That's right, Hazleton area was getting beat soundly at the end of the third quarter. Berwick had a marvelous third quarter that propelled him to the lead, but the Lady Cougars never say die. How about Lexi Wolf leading the way 12 points? She's just a sophomore and looking like she's getting better and better as each week goes on. She's a keeper, no question. Meanwhile, uh, Maria Corrado was the top scorer for the Lady Preppers last night, but Wyoming area, they win the game 48-32. Down in the Schuylkill League, uh, wow, talk about a mismatch. North Schuylkill Panther Valley last night, uh, all the way through. North Schuylkill from the get-go had this one comfortably in hand. The game of the night in the Schuylkill League was played down in Shimokin as Marion and Lords Regional battled it out. Now Gabby Green, who can really shoot, nice playmaker for Paul Brudeau's club, but last night, Lords Regional would uh, edge Marion, put it in the books, the Lady Raiders, 41-38 over the Phillies. And speaking of Raiders, let's go to the Blue Raiders at Tamaqua. They were 10 points better than Blue Mountain last night as uh, half the points were scored by the Streitzel family last night. They had 23 of Tamaqua's 46 points. On this frosty night, if you want to get out, well, uh, just dress warm getting into the gyms, but there's some good action going on. Berwick, Hazleton area, boys basketball, that'll start at 7.30 tonight. Wyoming area is over at MMI, down in the Schuylkill League, Monai area. The Red Hawk team down there hosting Tri-Valley. Marion will entertain Lords Regional. North Schuylkill goes to Panther Valley in Blue Mountain and Tamaqua Tangle down in Tamaqua. Swimming, Lake Lehman in town. The water will be warm, guaranteed that. Bowling, Hazleton area is over in Berwick. College basketball, you got Hartwick hosting Stevens Institute of Technology. Hey, how hungry are you tonight? The most popular wing night in town is up at Bottlenecks. That's right, they've got the area's best wings. And every Tuesday, they're just $9.95 for all you can eat. All of the delicious flavors. You can have as many as you like. You can't go wrong and they are delicious. Up at Bottlenecks every Tuesday. They sponsor us not only on Tuesdays, but it's a great place. Finally tonight, what a better way to spend a day off of school than with a friend at their school. MMI Prep invited their students to bring a friend to school to see what school at MMI is all about. Janine Mezerkevich tells us school's always better with a friend. Kids eating, laughing, and sharing their classwork. That's what Kristen says she did today when she came as a guest to MMI Prep School in Freeland with her best bud, Jessica but she also did some things she'd never done before. I went into Greek class and I've learned a lot of new words in there. And we did a different game in gym. We had to get everyone's flag and that was pretty fun. Thomas Hood is the head of school at MMI Prep. He says all students in grades six to eight were welcome to bring a school age guest with them to see what MMI has to offer. It's an opportunity for our middle school students to bring one of their friends and show off their school, meaning uh, the school that our students go to. And it's also a chance to expose potential other students who might be coming here in the future to our school. 
This is Jessica McClellan's first year at MMI, and there's plenty to show off to friends who don't go to the school. It's different because you change classes every like different time, mm -hmm. and there's lockers and other more people. Mr. Hood says the event is a positive experience for both the students and faculty, and he cannot wait to do it again next year. Well, it helps out obviously with admissions because it brings students to our school who wouldn't otherwise come here, but it also allows our students to take some pride in the school because they get to show off what they're doing, their teachers, to their friends, and everybody likes to do that. And while Kristen may have loved the visit, she still says there's no place like home. Well, I do like it here, but I'd, I'd be scared to leave my old friends because I've known them a lot. Yeah. And I do like my other school too, yeah. but I really like it here. Janine Mazurkevich, News 13, Freeland. That looked like a fun day. Well, that's News 13 for your Tuesday. Thank you so much for joining us on this freezing cold day. You can catch the newscast again with rebroadcasts through tonight or just go to News 13's website any old time, SSPTV.com, where you'll always find the local and regional news you need and the community news you want. For the entire News 13 team, thank you so much for joining us. Stay warm. I'm Kathy Bozinski. Have a great night.